are now going to be joined live on the phone by, as you know, one of my favorite people and, of course, a founding member of one of the greatest bands of all time. That band would be Van Halen. We welcome now the one and only Michael Anthony, a man that also makes a phenomenal hot sauce. <laughs> Michael, how are you, buddy? Eddie, how you doing? Every time you mention my hot sauce, that is that just a reminder that I have to send you some more? You're out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I still got a pretty good stash of it because your guy next time or you, whoever it was, was very generous enough to not only send me some, some fresh uh, sauces, but also the latest Matt Anthony t-shirt, which I wear proudly. So I, I think I'm pretty good for a little while. Okay, that sounds good. I tell him to take care of you, Eddie, so you, don't, he you never have to worry about running out. No, he does, and uh, I appreciate that very much. How you been, man? I haven't talked to you a little bit. How's the family? How you doing? Okay? Yeah, I'm doing good. Everyone's good. You know, just uh, got the new year going here. Uh, not too much on the uh, horizon as far as doing any touring. We toured quite a bit last year, and uh, so we're doing we're doing some spot shows here and there. So we'll be popping up from time to time. Well, you uh, know, it's funny. And, and by, before and way, well, I, I, let me let me get you, this out of the way real quick. Hagar Go wanted me to tell you hey from him, said to say hi, because if he's listening, he'll get all pissed off at me if I didn't say <laughs> hi, that he said hi. So, so there you go. I was telling somebody the story the other day. I was going through some old photos, and I found a photo of um, the only time in the history of my old TV show where we had a fourth host, and it was Sammy. And oh he God. was That's the, you and, and you were, were the you guest. Doing your show to get get all the the, the dirt, right? Right. Because he said to me, he calls me up and he says, he goes, I want to do your show. He go, I go, you know, you can do the show anytime you want. He said, no, but I want to be a host. I said, a host. <laughs> I go, all right. I go, what do you want to do that for? He goes, because the guest's going to be Michael Anthony, and we're not going to let him off the grill. We're going to go after him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "All right, so he, so he, he, yeah, he roped you into that one. I remember he that. Was, I found he was the photo me before I even did the show. I was so nervous by the time it came around to do the show. My God, I, I almost passed out before I walked out on stage there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so let me ask you a quick thing about Sammy. I know we're going to talk about this charity event, but obviously, uh -huh. great record that you guys put out recently. But I had Sammy on. I don't know, it was a month or so ago, not that long ago. We were talking and. It was uh, right after he turned 75, and we talked about him being 75 and all of that. And I said, you know, how, when's it, you know, when, when are you going to know you're done? Like, are you going to do the farewell thing? Are you just going to kind of drift away quietly? Like, how are you going to do that? And he was really like, you know, I never really thought about that. He was kind of like, I don't know, I might kind of be slowing down and done now. So <laughs> there, there are people that are concerned because there isn't a ton of Hagar stuff. What's your read? I mean, do you think he wants to go out as much as he's been doing, or do you think he's kind of winding down a little bit? Well, you know, it's kind of funny because, he, he, and we were talking about this too, by the way, that uh, I forget, he did an interview with somebody somewhere, and he mentioned the word retirement, right? Or it was brought Me. up. Me. Like, it was God, here, yeah. As soon as, that, as soon as that happened, then everybody, you know, here it comes, here, there, and there, and he, he, got, all, he got all worried about it, all nervous. Like, he's even asking me, what should I, what should I say? Because, you know, we don't retire, and I don't want to just – fade away do, do we just all of a sudden stop and one day we're not there we're never heard of from again and i said i don't know sam we're just gonna have to take it a day at a time but uh i mean we're, we're obviously not uh doing a lot of touring this year but uh in fact it's, it's kind of interesting because i was just on the phone with him probably about an hour ago and uh we were just talking about you know uh a couple new ideas he had for songs and whatever so i mean i don't think you ever really retire which you and I both know, you know, bands like Kiss and whatever have, have proved to everybody over and over again, right? You know, you say you're going to retire, but you never really retire, you know? Well, I said that a million times. I mean, I, I don't think that anybody ever ends anymore because you see how many bands out there with no original members, When you, if you can consider that valid or not, that's up to you. Um, yeah. But you see that, you see people turning into holograms. I had Carl Palmer on this show a year, less than a year ago. He's doing an ELP tour. He said, how are you doing that? Uh, Keith Emerson and, and Greg Lake sat, sadly are gonna are gone. He said, I'm gonna put up screens in the, of their performances. So it's it's crazy. Like no nothing is ever over, really. You just kind of figure out another way to evolve into the brand, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like I've I've seen it done, like like 
uh, McCartney out there, you know, and he puts John Lennon up on the screen and they're singing together, you know, or, you know, like, like you said, everybody's kind of doing that. I don't think we'd ever ever do that if if it ever came up. Just to get ahead of myself here uh, with Eddie, you know, because we were always such a live thing, you know. But uh, but then again, who knows? Well, you know? I mean, that's a whole other thing because um, you know, you know, you and I both know there are still a lot of people hopeful that there will be something for Eddie Van Halen. I mean, we just lost Jeff Beck, and yeah. there's already a, a two day tribute event. We lost yeah, Taylor. Flat. Clapton's doing something, I think. Is, is he doing yeah, something? Clapton's doing, something doing a thing at Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, Royal Albert Hall, right. Do you have any updates on that front, Michael? Has anyone been in touch with you? No, no one's been in touch with me, uh, except for, and I'll touch base on it, some reissue stuff that, that uh, is going to be starting to come out. But, uh, I mean, I spoke with Alex uh, not a long time ago. Well, it's probably been uh, at least six months ago I, I spoke with Al. And, and, and when we speak... It's it's kind of funny because we don't really speak that much about music. You know, we speak a lot about family and what's going on like that. I mean, the last time I talked to him, he's still obviously uh, very upset and, and, and mourning his brother's passing, you know, because they were so, they were so close. But uh, I myself would love to see something happen. I don't know what incarnation it, it would be because we're talking words come up about Roth and then, and then not Roth and then Sammy and then, you know, Whatever, so I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's like a big ball of spaghetti, and once we unwind the whole thing, then we'll see if, if something's going to happen. But if, so, if something did happen and it's done the the, the right way to uh, honor honor Ed, and uh, you know, I'm I'm totally in 100 percent myself. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy because it seems now when when Wolf is approached about it, he just basically says, well, "It's up to my uncle. It's up to Al." And and then the Roth Hagar part of it. And Wolf has said the the level of dysfunction. I mean, that's his own words. He said, mm -hmm. "Dealing." Oh, yeah. He goes, "It's a." He goes, "It's amazing that we got anything done when I was in the band." He said, "So, he he he's kind of like you know he put out a new song today. He's kind of on his own trip and doing his own thing, which is great. But it seems like um, he kind of has left it in 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 Alex's yeah. hands to some degree." Yeah, I read. I read. Uh when he uh, a couple of interviews that he did after he performed at the Taylor Hawkins benefit that was you know overseas and here, and uh, he was saying that you know because he did a cup he did a couple of Van Halen songs he's I know he did Hot for Teacher I, I've seen a, a couple of things that he did, and he did it quite well but he said that to him in his heart that that was enough closure for him you know, and uh, I mean I could see where where he's coming from because you know he's carved out his own niche in the musical world and it's hard enough for him, uh, you know, up, up until this point. And I think he's doing a really good job of it. I, I just actually heard his new single yesterday and it's, it's pretty rock and I like it. Yeah, no, it's good. It's great what he's doing and he does everything himself on the records and he goes out and puts a great live yeah. band together and he's out there touring but, right now. And but, I mean, he said, he said, look, he goes, he told me and many others that uh, his dad always said, you do you, you know, don't go do yeah. a Van Halen tribute, do you. And I mean, look, it, it would have been a way easier path for him to go the other way, probably, oh, yeah. but the fact that he's doing this is great. I think. Yeah, yeah, and especially if, if he did chose that path. I mean, there's, there's, it, it, he come, you come to a wall at a certain point, you know, if, if you're yeah. doing something like that. And uh, he is, he is correct in saying that it's up to his uncle Al because, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't do anything unless Alex was involved with it myself. So I guess, I guess we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Uh, I don't know. Should we get Al on the line right now? I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know, you know, Michael, I don't know Alex at all. Like, I met him once. I've never interviewed him. I've never talked uh -huh. to him. I know he's a pretty reclusive guy. I would love to talk to him, of course, but I, I, I don't know if he knows me from a hole in the wall or would ever do it. But yeah. thing is, the, the part about it, and I, again, I, don't wanna, I know you got other stuff to talk about. I'm not going to mm -hmm. pound on on this. But the thing I don't understand is this. If Alex tomorrow called up the forum and said, I'm going to do a tribute to my brother, Eddie Van Halen, on this date and, and said the date and booked the room. And then he called you, and you already just said you'd be in. Mm -hmm. And then he called Sa Sammy and, and or Dave, because it should be both. But my point is, why not just like, just like the Jeff Beck thing, just like the Taylor Hawkins thing? If you announce something like that, you and I both know there's not a musician on the planet that would not want to partake in that. So it becomes, it thing would book itself. All you got to do is hire somebody to say, yeah, you're nay, 
and who, who shows up shows up. Oh, exactly. And if, I gotta do is put if the, Roth the, doesn't the, show up, put it on him. Yeah, all I gotta do is put the ticket thing on the wall, and every guitarist in the world would be yes grabbing a ticket to get in line for that. But uh, yeah, and 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 I'm I'm sure Alex knows that. Yeah, you know, we have spoken a little bit uh, about uh, you know he wanted his real big concern is that he doesn't want anyone to take advantage of his brother's legacy. You know, and he's he was really like serious about that. Uh, uh, we spoke once uh, sometime back about it, and uh, you know, I, I guess it's just gonna it's gonna be when when Al feels the time is right, and hopefully it's sooner than later. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not even kidding. I mean, look, I know that he has all the resources in the world, and I know they've mm-hmm. got major management and all that. Also, find that sometimes these guys have so many things coming at them, they don't know what's what. I would have no problem helping out just to do it because here's the other component. Here's the other way that you alleviate a lot of drama. You make all of the money go to charity. And this way, it's not about who's getting paid what or what's going on with that. And Eddie had that charity he loved, Mr. Holland's Opus. Opus, Give all the money to that. And then whoever shows up, shows up. Have a big jam, celebrate the guy and be done with it. One night at the forum, you're done. Yeah, yeah, no, that that that's exactly the way. You know, whether it's one night or two nights, you know, here or right. you know, a couple of places, and uh, you're you're totally right. I wouldn't uh, accept any money for it. I'd, I'd donate every. You know, if, if it was like donate to a charity, you know, I have charities that you know that I'm involved with too or whatever. But you know, it it should be something like that and uh, not something that would turn into any kind of a money grab for anybody. No, yeah. the thing would book itself, you fund the charity, everybody celebrates the guy, and there's that closure, and hey, if ever if you see who who shows up, if Roth doesn't show up, let him explain why he didn't show up, put it on him, you get plenty of singers, you can sing some songs, if Sammy's there, he can do some songs, you get Gary out there to do a song or two, I mean, it would just fall in line effortlessly because of how many people loved and were influenced by Eddie. I mean, I, nobody can figure out why this is that difficult yeah. for everybody. You know what? You know what, Eddie? Maybe, maybe you should be the one to call Alex then. See, because when you put it like that, you know, you, you, it, somebody has to put it like that to Alex, you know. I don't know if, if, well, that, if anybody has yet or whatever. You know, there are certain people I know that, you know, probably have their own other uh, things in mind, you know, personal thing. you know, whether it's management or whatever, but... Uh, you know, Alex just has to totally realize that that it would be like you know a total honoring thing and 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 total and do it for charity or, or whatever you know. Yeah, and that's what I meant by willing to help. I don't know the guy, but if you talk to him and he's open to to me helping or talking to him or just giving him my two cents, I do it in two seconds because I have been a part of some charity stuff before, not at that level. Yeah. But again, sometimes I think people probably have so much noise coming at them, they they can't process how to do it and uh it, it shouldn't be that it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, you get a, a promoter, you get one guy to just handle the band, and he, that's it. Alex Van Halen presents a tribute to to Eddie. Done. That's all you need, and yeah, you're good exactly. to go. Yeah, so yeah, Alex, Alex is a very soft spoken guy, and, and you know, if people are firing at you like that, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe it just drives him more into just kind of like reclusing, you know, and not, uh, you know, wanting to deal with it. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens, you know, and I, you know. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, again, it's just something I mean, that should that happen. I say, yeah. Oh, no, it, it definitely should happen, you know. The Hagar records are, you said you were approached about Catalog. They're finally going to start doing some stuff with the Sammy Era records, right? Yeah. Have you heard anything about that? Well, I heard that the I, live record's going to come out on vinyl with some extra songs. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you what, well, what I can't, what I'm uh, instructed to tell you. I was put it that way. <laughs> No, right. yeah, we're we're, we're going to do, we're starting out with a bunch of the reissues stuff with the Sammy years, you know, with all his albums. And the first thing that's going to come out uh, will be the Right Here, Right Now live album that we did back in 92. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, I, I don't know what, what day is Record Store Day or Final Day next month for LP deal with some uh, other uh, bonus stuff on there. And uh, we're just going to take it from there. Uh, there's going to be, you know, it's, we're going to go through all the Sammy stuff and we got, there's other stuff uh, that we're going through, you know, different recordings and stuff like that. And uh, interestingly enough, we have uh, Don Landy, who, if you're familiar with Don, I'm sure you are, who of course. engineered with Ted Talman. And Don is uh, kind of overseeing the whole thing, which is pretty cool. You know, I'd love to interview him, too. I do interviews with producers all the time. I uh-huh. would love to interview him. If you speak to him and you're in touch with him, I would love to... <laughs> 
get his contact and have him on. Not just about this, but just about everything. I yeah. mean, he was. You know, I, I can he was the guy. He's, he's another guy that he's he's very he's a very quiet, uh, kept to himself type of person. He's always been like that. Uh, amazing, you know, when back when we first uh, went in and did the first Van Halen record, all the way up through you know uh, 80, 1984, when uh, we were working with them. Just watching him work like the tape machines when everything was done on tape, you know, like splicing when you're when you're cutting this out and putting this in. That guy was he was the master of it, and uh, it was it was just I'd, I'd love to sit in the studio and just watch him cut this tape, and that'd be like miles of tape on the floor, and then pick up this one piece and put it in and whatever. And then when he when he's finished, it'd roll the tape, and it wouldn't sound like you know like there was a cut in it at all. Pretty real mm-hmm. amazing guy. Back in the day, but yeah. Michael, you were saying that you know about these these Hagar era records, of course, and, and everything, and that you were approached or what have you. I mean, are you uh, are you involved now in the reissues? Like, in, do you have some say in what may or may come out? Are you gonna Are you in a position where you could actually we hear about these archives uh, of all this stuff? Are you in a position where you might be able to start digging into some of that stuff yourself, or are you just hearing about it as they're announcing it? Well, uh, right now I'm just hearing about it as they're announcing it, but there is a plan of what we're going to do, and, uh, you know, I'm obviously going to be vocal about it uh, because I I would like to have a a kind of a hand in there, you know, even if it's just sonically, but certain things are, you know, sounding like what uh, Don's doing, and... uh, also, hopefully, we'll be following up, you know, doing Roth stuff, too. Who knows, you know? Because, I mean, all of us fans have heard about, and I've heard a box set that never came out. Mm-hmm. I was in a studio in L.A. that there was a box set, and, 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 you know, Van Halen fans, so frustrated at so little stuff that's come out, archival stuff, and we all yeah. know there's, like, tons and tons of it. So it's sounding like, if I'm hearing this right, that there's finally movement in things starting to come out. There is, yeah, there is movement in there, and we're digging back into stuff. Uh, obviously, there's there's a lot more stuff that's even at the Ed's old, at the 5150 studio, and uh, you know that's that's a lot of that stuff. I know either Wolfie and Alex will start going through stuff there, and seeing what there is. But yeah, there's there's a ton of stuff. When was the last time you personally were at 5150? Oh my God, I can't even remember, Eddie. I'll tell you. It's, it was probably uh, <clears throat> it was probably in uh, 2004 before we started the tour. And do you are, were you a guy that kept a lot of stuff? Like, is there a Michael Anthony archive? Did you keep tapes or videos of stuff yourself? I do have videos. I've got. I used to know people that 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 uh, collected really quality bootleg stuff. I've got sacks of bootleg stuff. I've got. Uh, I mean, I've got. I've got shows. <clears throat> that are almost album quality that I've gotten from certain people that used to uh, uh, dig around and find stuff for me. You know, because back in the day, there was always that one sound guy who would uh, accidentally record something, record a live show for himself. <laughs> right. And uh, all of a sudden, there it is. So I've, I've got a bunch of stuff like that. And then, you know. Do you have video, I, Michael? I do have, I do have some video. That's one thing that we didn't do a hell of a lot uh, that we probably should have done was a lot of, you know, where everybody started doing behind-the-scenes stuff, studio stuff or whatever. We used to always, like, you know, as far back as, uh, you know, well, early, very early 80s or whatever, you know, you'd play, you'd play somewhere like the, uh, the Capitol Center in Maryland or something like that, and they would record it for us, you know. And I've, right. I've, got, I've got a few... Uh, videos live videos like that that like the the house would do for you that have never been seen that never yeah. came out yet or or yeah, are out there yeah, on youtube yeah, yeah no that have never been out <sighs> yeah you realize what fans are <laughs> like you realize i'm coming over with a six-pack yeah. man we got to sit in your living room come on now i don't know if you come over with a big bottle of jack daniels or something you might be able to fry something out of me no i'm just kidding I'll- Bring a case, but, you know, and that, that you know, and that, and that kind of jars my my reminds me too. I should I should you know look through all that stuff because I've got stuff spread out over a couple of different uh, storage places too that I should kind of like gather up and at least have in one spot because at some point, you know, it it, it is to me it is kind of sad that there hasn't been more stuff like that that has been you know available to the public. 
you know, to, to, to see from the band, especially the Roth days, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm sure you get a lot of it, but we talk about it all the time on this show. It's amazingly frustrating to the, the lack of output, whether it's a catalog, whether it's at the time when Eddie was with us, still new music or tours or box yeah. sets or and, videos and, and, or and, you know, proper issues, get, nothing. I don't want to get too far into it here, or, or, uh, but, uh, you know, and that was Eddie and Alex, they, they didn't want to put anything out you know i know for a fact like all like early tours we used to record every single show just and then that was just for the band so that we could critique ourselves after every show and and this this went on for you know a few years like the first the first few tours we would uh record almost every show and and uh i'm sure somewhere around uh eddie's house or wolfgang's got him now or something that uh got a lot of these tapes oh man hopefully Hopefully we get to see and hear some of that stuff. One last Van Halen thing, and we'll talk about a few other stuff, a few other things. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. I'm sure you know this. A couple days ago, this blew my mind. Was the 25th anniversary of the one album with Gary Van Halen Three with Sharon, and uh, a record that is often pretty maligned in the Van Halen catalog, if we're mm -hmm. being honest. But I think over years, there's been some things on that record that people may be warm to a little bit. But 25 years after that record, what what are what are your thoughts on it, and what do you remember about that whole period introducing a third singer at the time? Yeah, you know that was that was that was uh, oh boy, that was uh, really a, a strange time because uh, Alex, and during part of that, I remember Alex was going through a divorce, and uh, you know, and, and there'd be times where we'd start up in the studio, and he couldn't even. You know, then they'd have to, he'd have to leave, would record for a half hour, and have to leave, have to meet with his lawyer, this, that. It just, it was just a really a, a strange time. Gary moved, Gary actually moved into the guest house up there by Ed. You know, Ed would be calling him in the middle of the night, all hours of the, of the day, saying, hey, I've got an idea for this. And, you know, and, and Gary grew a little old of that, so he finally moved out of the house there. And uh, it, it was just a strange time. And, and, you know, and bringing Mike Post in. He was trying to influence Ed on certain things, so it was just a really strange, strange time. I'll, I'll tell you one thing though that was that was really kind of uh, sad for me was that the band there was only like not even a handful of songs that the band actually uh, recorded together in the studio, and before that we used to record everything with everybody in the studio, you know. That record was being made outside of it being Gary and and having the challenge of introducing a, a new singer. When you were when you were hearing this material, and then as you said, Mike Post, the guy who produced it, not necessarily with a big rock background and everything. Right. I mean, in your heart of hearts, were you as this thing was coming together? Were you thinking like this ain't going to work? Well, I was not a big a big Mike Post fan. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was not uh, on board with the fact that he was going to be doing it, and uh, you know, going in and uh, and uh, playing bass to the track myself in the studio, you know, putting down the bass like that was, you know, I mean, that's, that's the way a lot of people do it. And I've done that with, you know, if, if we have to have to go over and, and fix something up, but not to a track being put together like that, you know, we've always played live in the studio and, and that, that part I didn't really enjoy myself of having, of have doing it that way. When's the last time you listened to the record? Do you listen to it ever? You know what? I really don't listen to it. But now that you mentioned it, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to listen to it because there are some really, actually, some really good parts on that record and and a couple of things that we actually played live. Actually, I, I really enjoyed playing. Yeah, and and speaking of outtakes and things like that and stuff that didn't come out, I actually I can't say where, but I actually heard demos for what would have been the second record with Gary if they didn't things didn't change. And they were way more in line with what people would have wanted from a Van Halen record. So uh, it didn't get off the mat, but uh, there yeah. were like five, six songs that were starting to be done with Gary that would have been a potential follow-up to that record, right? Yeah, and they were a little bit more straight ahead what Van Halen sounds like, you know? Yeah, yeah. But well, uh, maybe yeah, a couple of them, a couple of things. Uh, I can't remember what the working titles were. There were a couple of things that, that uh, uh, were that we... Uh, did not include on that Van on Van Halen three that I thought were sounding really good that uh, ended up not not being used. Yeah.
Well, listen, I could talk to you about Van Halen forever, but I know you're calling in to talk about a, a charity event that you have. We've had you on for the walks that you've done in the past, but this is uh, this is a jam. This sounds uh, this sounds kind of cool and for a great cause. So yeah, it's, fill it's, the audience in about what's going on on Saturday. Yeah, well, first, thanks a lot for for everything you've done to help me out with it's Children's Hospital Los Angeles. The first the first year, and in fact, my my uh, just really quick, my grandson he would have been uh, six years old on the twentieth of this month. Oh wow! So it was six years ago that we that I, I came on your show and you put the word out, Eddie, and because of that, we raised uh, God. Our team, we did the walk for Children's Hospital. Our team alone, we raised well over a hundred thousand dollars. And you're still doing those walks, right? Yes. Yes, I am, and, and I, 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 I donate pretty much year-round for certain functions to Children's Hospital Los Angeles because, uh, you know, like I said, ever, ever since uh, my, my grandson was, was born with uh, congenital heart disease and uh, was there, I, I came to realize exactly what the hospital is all about and what they do, you know, and I'm, so I'm very passionate. My family is very passionate about helping them out now. But sure. there's another foundation that my, my daughter, Elisha, is involved with called Save the Heartbeat, and what they do is they work to do research and early detection for children born with uh, CHD because it's like something like one out of every hundred or it, it's quite a high rate of children that are born with this and a lot of them do not make it. And that's because of, there's no early detection and whatever. So they do all that. And how this whole thing came about last year, there was a gala that I went to and donated a base that we auctioned off. And my daughter goes, hey, why don't, why don't we uh, uh, auction off uh, the chance for somebody to be able to come up and play with you at a show? And, uh, of course, you know, in the moment I went, yeah, sure. <laughs> so they, they did that. But then it was like, well, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do? They can't come up and play with the circle or, or whatever. And so they decided to do like a little show somewhere. And it all of a sudden morphed into this little, it's, it's kind of a charity fundraiser of its own now. And, uh, you know, it's nothing that's being done on a huge scale. In fact, it's, it's going to be held at, at a bar here in Costa Mesa, California. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've got this band. They're called The Trip. Very good band. They played at my daughter's wedding that I got to be kind of a backup band. And they were looking at me going, well, who, who's, who else are you, you getting to come out and jam with you? And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, so I just I kind of put the word out to a couple of friends of mine, and uh, it's turned into a, a kind of a cool thing. We're going to play like three sets of music, and I'm going to have uh, some people come up. Sammy's going to come out. Uh, Trey Cool, who's the drummer of Green Day, he's uh, one of my neighbors out here in uh, Newport Beach. He's coming out, and then uh, my buddy, uh, probably one of the, the best hearts of anybody I know, John Five. John sure. Five's gonna, John's gonna come out. He's on a, on his break from uh, the Motley tour now, and he's he said that he wanted to come out, and uh, you know, got some other people coming out. We got uh, Phil X, who plays with Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. No, he's, he's he's coming out and uh, Ron Fall, Bumblefoot. Bumble, yeah, sure. Bumble, he's going to come out and uh, play some stuff, and it's just going to be a night of. Uh, there's going to be a, a few sets of music, and in between, we'll be auctioning off uh, some items for the charity. You know, I've got uh, a little bit of equipment. I got another bass. We got some other uh, cool stuff we're going to auction off, and uh, it's just going to, you know, and it was just put together. We didn't, you know, it without. Uh, you know, we didn't want it to be some really big blowout thing, you know, that they didn't want it. So that's so it's at a small club. And, uh, I mean, this place only holds like 250 to 300 people maybe. And uh, to be able to get a ticket and come to this thing and, and watch someone like John Five, watch his fingers work from up close, is going to be pretty cool. Wasn't the first time you saw John was when he was on my TV show? I remember that. You and Sammy were in the audience, and I threw to John, and he played into the break. And I remember both of you guys turning to me and goes, go, who the hell is that guy? <laughs> you had, yeah, because he was like kind of, you had, you had like a guitar player or someone that would play during the yeah. breaks, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. I remember I was walking to go back behind where the seating was, and I saw John, and John goes, hey, check it out. And he did some, first he pulls the cord out of his guitar and starts popping it and buzzing it all over himself <laughs> it, like some cool rhythm. Then he plugs it in and starts whipping off all this Van Halen stuff. And I was just going, what planet did this guy come from? <laughs> That's the first time I ever met him. Yeah, I remember that. I remember clearly like you guys didn't know him. And I remember saying, all right, we'll be right back with more with Sammy and Michael after the break. And I threw to the break and then John did the first like 
his first little intro thing into the commercials that we used to do on that metal show. And I remember yeah. it was you or Sam, you were right next to me. Go, whoa, whoa, what? Who's that guy? Yeah. <laughs> and I saw you guys talking, and and then you got up with John at his show at the Whiskey. I was there a few years I've, ago I've and did that, some I've Van Allen. I've done that a couple times with John actually. Yeah, he's invited yeah. me to come out because you know he says, hey, let's play a couple of Van Halen songs, and so you know we come out and uh, man, I mean the guy, he's as far as you know, just an instrumentalist, that guy, he can play a three-hour show and keep me entertained from the first minute to the last minute. You know, everything from banjo to whatever, you know, he picks up and plays. But, uh, you know, it's kind of f interesting because after we met him on your show, we kind of kept in touch. And we were, when we were initially putting the chicken foot thing together, he was, uh, the, uh, he was the first choice for a guitarist in that. But he was uh, committed to uh, Rob Zombie at that time. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. We we had spoken to him. Sammy and I talked to him with each with each other and said, "Oh my God, John Five would be perfect for Chicken Foot." Yeah, but it but uh, unfortunately it didn't work out. I mean, we ended up with with Joe, who's no slouch either. But you know, <laughs> right? It's not like you settled, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but uh, John was right there. I mean, could have been interesting with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's probably the nicest guy besides me that I know. <laughs> I would agree with that. Well, that's what I was just going to say. When you got yourself and John and Bumble and I don't know Trey, but of course Sammy. I mean, not only do you have great musicians, but great people. So I, you know, it's going to be fun and it's going to be a great vibe and no drama, which is what you want as well when you yeah, do this stuff. Yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a great cause, and every penny from everything that's being auctioned off and whatever, you know, and, and those guys are there. There's going to be some. Uh, uh, photos that that everybody will autograph and uh you know every penny is going to go to the charity so that's it's it's really cool and 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 i'm i'm really i can't believe that these guys said yeah oh well, yeah we'll come down and jam you know because it's just this little little bar all right we got michael back and now we got him on the cell phone yeah, you know, I was just go, saying Eddie. to the audience, I just saying to the audience how funny was it when i told you let's do the landline because it'll be better and then that's what crapped out exactly and i'm looking at it the battery just and I made sure that the battery was fully charged up. I guess it's time for a new cordless phone system here at home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, well uh, we were talking <laughs> where, where we started that. to lose you was when we were talking about um, we were talking about the tickets. And I w during wh while we were waiting for you to get back on, I mentioned the place is actually called the Tiki Bar. It's in Costa Mesa. It starts this. It starts at eight o'clock this coming Saturday. And where do people go for whatever tickets might be left for this? You can go to the foundation uh, website. It's called SaveTheHeartbeat.org, and they'll have information, and you can purchase tickets right there. I, I don't know how many tickets are left, but I know there are a few that they released. And like I said, it's a small place, and if you've never seen John Five up close play guitar, you're not going to want to miss this. Yeah, so you've got that. You've got I mentioned all the musicians that are playing, and I just pulled that page up. Uh, as you mentioned, you can buy tickets there. The information is there. And you can also make, if you can't attend this and you want to uh, buy stuff or bid on stuff or make donations, you can also do that, right? Yeah, you can do that right on their website. You can donate. Uh, I know they sell, like, some jewelry items that if anybody is, you know, knows somebody who uh, is, you know, um, related to somebody who has had this disease or a family that they have cut some really cool jewelry items that they sell over the website. But, uh, yeah, you can do it all on the SaveTheHeartbeat.org uh, uh, website. And, uh, yeah, come on out. It's going to – you can make it out there. Anyone can make it out there and buy a ticket. It's it's going to be it's going to be fun. Man, it sounds like a blast. And I tell you, I would I would – if I was at my place in Vegas, I'd be there in a minute, but – I'm in New Jersey and I'm stuck here with my kids, so I can't get uh, I can't travel that weekend. But I would be there in a minute if uh, if I was at all available. But if you do this again and uh, I can help in any way or further, I mean, just let me know. It's a great cause. This stuff you're doing, whether it's the walk or this event, you got all my buddies playing there as well. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a great night. Yeah, it is. And Eddie, I really I really appreciate it. And uh, it looks if this goes off and it's it's fun, then we might. Uh, you know, upsize it to a, a, a another place here and uh, and do it again. One last thing. Do you, because we talked about Sammy, we, we don't know what he's doing, if he may or may not kind of wind down again. We talked about it. That's where that all came from when he was on here last. But do you have any desire 
I mean, Sammy's a little bit older than you. Say he was done. I mean, do you have any desire to do another band or play with anyone else or even maybe get your own thing together just for fun? Well, I wasn't going to mention anything about it, but there is like a little side project thing that I've uh, kind of uh, been speaking to some people and might be doing a couple of things. I I, I don't want to get ahead of myself and mention too much, but uh, might involve uh, Phil X and uh, John Douglas, who, you know, is manning for Aerosmith right now. J.D., I've known J.D. for many years since he's worked with Van Halen. J.D. was just at my house in Vegas. I had him on when he was uh, uh, selling his art yeah, he, out there. I went to his yeah, gallery. Oh, thing. my God. The guy's he's an ama- amazing artist. Yeah, I mean, he, he just did, all did my of, show. All yeah. Frank, yeah, yeah, what a great guy. And uh, we do have a singer. I don't want to mention any names, but uh, a really, really cool singer. And we're uh, recording just for fun right now some stuff. So. Well, if <laughs> you have a, if, that's all I can say. <laughs> but here's here's what I'll say: if you have a singer who you can't name yet, and the way you can sing, and the way Phil X can sing, have you ever heard Phil sing lead? Phil's voice is yes, insane. Yes, in fact, in fact, if anybody comes to the show, Phil's going to be doing a little bit of singing at the show here. So I mean, you've got Phil with a killer voice, your voice, and then you're talking another singer. Whatever this band is going to turn into vocally, it should be unbelievable. And this guy's a good singer, too. That's all I can say. He's he's a great singer. Because I think it would be great, like, if you did some original stuff, that's fine. But if you, like, I, the last couple times I saw you with Sammy, you came out and you sang Running with the Devil and you you sang lead on a couple yeah. old Van Halen songs. It sounded great. If you put, like, a killer band together, and even if you were out front doing uh, the singing and going playing some, some VH and then maybe a few covers or whatever, I think that would be a great, fun band to see. Well, you know what? Maybe if we put some, if we put a little something together, Eddie, when you're out this way, we'll come out. And we'll, we'll, you can, you can come and uh, introduce us. We'll, we'll play out there on Fremont Street. There you go. Are you getting to Vegas <laughs> much? You told me, you told me you take your yeah. RV there and hang out there sometimes, yeah, right? You know what? I haven't been out there in a little while because I'm having some repair work done on my RV. But I do own a spot at uh, a resort out there, so I've spent a lot of time. Spending a lot of time, not uh, as much during the summer months, obviously, because it's so damn hot out there. But uh, yeah, but I'm out there, and I and I, I see some of the little parties you have out there. So I'm gonna have to hit you <laughs> up when I know you're. <laughs> Believe me, I. <laughs> I'm, but, uh, I'm the yeah. king. I'm we'll the king to, of we'll Vegas, together, Michael. You didn't know Vegas. that. I'm the king of Vegas now. You didn't know that. I'm, I'm the party oh, master. Well, I can't. <laughs> But we'll definitely have to get together when I when I'm out there and you're out that way. Get some of your buddies out there, and I'm sure I'll I'll be crawling back to my motorhome. Oh, please let me know, man. I mean, I try to get out at least a week a month if I can, and I'm going out next week. So if you're if you're there when I'm there, we should absolutely do that and have some fun. You know, when I was there last couple of weeks ago, I was walking down the strip and I walked right past Sammy's place, the the cantina. And mm-hmm. I said, yeah, I'm going to go in here and get something to eat. I went in with a couple buddies, and uh, I texted him. I said, the food any good at this joint? And he was, uh, he was in Mexico celebrating his son's birthday, and he was, he was fired up. He was FaceTiming me. He had him send over a shot of tequila. It was like we, I was partying with him, and he wasn't even in the same country. Wait, he sent you over a shot. He, did he take care of the food and everything? He better take he, he care pre- of everything. He, he pretty much did. I mean, he did. I think, okay. I think he did at the end of the night. He took care of us pretty well. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a, they got some good food at that one out there. In they do. They do. It's a great spot. It really is, honestly. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, at the, in November, they're running a uh, uh, Formula One racing out there in Vegas, which they, they haven't had out there. And it's, it, it's, they're going to be going right past this cantina. cantina and I, I told him, I said, Sam, you better have a table reserved for me up there. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. It, just getting uh, – space uh, overlooking that race i'm hearing the casinos are charging like three four grand a night if the if the window yeah. faces the race it's yeah nuts. and a night race it's gonna be a night race too so it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun out there at that time i'm in fact hey, uh, i'll tell you i'll tell you right now i'm working on our manager talking solo and I, I know he's probably not listening to this right now but i know before they have those races they do a lot of promotion and a lot of partying and stuff like that leading up to it and i told him i said let's get the circle out there to play something you know, before yeah. that race. So, yeah. who knows? I'm trying, yeah. Eddie. I'm going to keep Hagar out there working as long as I can. <laughs> hey, as long, as long as you can, 
as long as you're still as good as he is, as long as you can still sing like he can, why not? I mean, the only reason why I think bands should end is if they start making a mockery of their legacy, everything's on tape, it's like a joke, then, then yeah, you should stop. But when you're, you guys still do it as well as you guys do it with that band with Vic and, and Jason and yourself. I mean, why not, man? As long as Sammy can still keep it at the level he's at, why not? Yeah, I know, Eddie, and I know you're the one. You're the one who's, who's who's right up there at the top of the list when you say, "Hey, absolutely live." When you say that, see, that's that's the way like it should be played live. You know, I, I know way. when you go to see when you go to see the guys that you, that you go to see, and everyone's playing it up there live. That's what you like, and that's how it should that's be. It. Yeah. I've never understood the the reason why <laughs> that you even go to a live rock show if it's not to hear the band live, warts and all. I mean, that's the whole point, right? <laughs> what are you going for? Exactly. Listen, buddy, I appreciate the time. You know, anytime I can do anything for you, you know where to get me. And uh, I'm excited, man. I mean, it sounds like you got a few things cooking. It looks like still Sammy's got one foot in the game a little bit. Some Van Halen reissues finally coming. Yep. And, of course, yep. this no, charity no, another, event. So good another, stuff. Another quick thing to think about, too. Sammy and I have been kind of experimenting a little bit around as far as uh, just a two-man show. One bass, one guitar, and us two screaming. Mm. To do some that would be cool. stuff. What was that? Do you remember a band? Remember Hot Tuna? Did yeah. You back? Yeah, something like that. But we've, we've been kind of just uh, kicking some stuff around. So All right. Well, we could, in the meantime, some... yeah, it sounds like cool stuff cooking. In the meantime, savetheheartbeat.org is where you want to go for more information about this great charity. And again, the event is this Saturday, the Tiki Bar, Costa Mesa, California, 8 o'clock start. Uh, not a lot of tickets left, as you would imagine. Michael Anthony headlining, Sammy Hagar making an appearance, Bumblefoot, Phil X, John Five, Trey Cool. Uh, I'm I'm so bummed that I I have a conflict and can't be there, but I wish you the best of luck with this, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon, man. Somewhere out there, nice we'll see you in Vegas I'll or wherever. I'll catch I'll catch you in Vegas, definitely. All right, that'll be fun, Michael. Thanks. Best to you and the family, and good luck on Saturday, buddy. Thanks, Eddie. Great talking to you. You too, man. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. Cell phone sounded cl crystal clear. <laughs> you can never figure it out. Ah, that guy's the best, man. Said it a million times. He's the best. Michael Anthony joining us and uh great charity event. Man, if I was in Southern California, or even like I said, at my uh Vegas place in striking distance there, I would absolutely go to that because what a cool setting. Incredible talent he's assembled, and obviously a great, great cause. Again, savetheheartbeat.org. If you're in Southern California and you'd like to attend, I would get on it soon. You just heard Michael say, place holds two, 300 tickets, whatever, and he just put it out there on national radio, Pretty probably the only interview he did for it. So something tells me in minutes this thing will be sold out. So good luck on that and uh, help out this great, great cause if you can. Michael Anthony, everybody, and a lot of stuff to break down there. As usual, Michael always gives us great stuff, sounding like he's a little involved in the Van Halen reissues, which is great to see. You know, we know historically that's been like Alex, maybe Wolf, whatever, Michael speaking like saying, yeah, I'm starting to put my – get in there a little bit i'm talking alex he sounds like he's trying to pull some stuff out he's involved in the live reissue he's uh talking to don landy who's working on the coming reissues that's all great stuff michael's michael's a founding guy in the band he should have a voice and a say so that's very cool to hear it sounds like another band coming you just heard him talk about phil x you know playing uh with him potentially or not potentially he said he has the band he just can't say who the singer is so that's pretty darn cool. Some scattered Sammy stuff. Maybe a duo show with Sammy. Some thoughts on Van Halen 3 25 years later. Didn't sound like it was high on his list either as far as experiences and records he made with VH. Couple comments on Wolf and what he's doing now. Great stuff. But I'll tell you, um, and look, if he ever connected me with, with uh, even if it was off the air in private with Alex Van Halen, it sounds like it is all landing on him. And as you heard Michael say, he is still understandably struggling with the death of his brother. But somebody, it shouldn't be this hard to make something happen. He agreed, and let's all hope that somehow that can happen still, too, the, 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 the tribute show. A lot of stuff in there. 
as usual, huge thanks to Michael Anthony, the real deal. You know, no bullshit, no, oh, let's not talk about that and stay away from this or whatever. And, of course, he ends by saying, keep rock and roll live the way it should be. Amen. Amen. All right, lot to chew on there. I can hear the and feel the Internet buzzing already. 